So Rockset is the search and analytics database that provides low latency response time over real-time data. This is the fourth video in the Rockset database internal series and in this one we will understand compute-compute separation. This ensures two of the most critical requirements for Rockset. First, horizontal scalability. Second is workload isolation. Basically, load from one should not affect the others. Now, instead of jumping the gun, we will go through the evolution of the solutions. But before we begin, I would highly recommend you to check out the other videos of the series. Although they are not prerequisite for this one, but I would still recommend you to watch them out. Okay, now let's jump into what compute compute separation is. But before that, let's take a step back. A step back to understand how a traditional database works. Traditional database like MySQL Postgres. Okay, so in this case, you have a single node in which you fire a query to ingest the data, you fire the query to read the data. Right? Now, this database are typically known to give you strong consistency. Strong consistency which, which means that the data that you wrote is immediately available for you to query. Correct. This we can also term it as a real-time database because there is no lag for your data to be available for query. But this suffers from a lot of problem. The major one is that given that your queries to ingest and your queries to compute are part or are being served from the same node, there is a basically there is a contention, there is a resource contention happening. Your ingest workload and your query workload are contending for the same set of hardware resources because the CPU, memory and all are limited, they are contending for it. Which means if there is a high ingestion volume, your query would suffer. And if there is a high query volume, your ingestions would suffer. That is problem number one. Problem number two is that if you have multiple applications querying the data from the same database. Now they are all because they are all querying on the same database. The problem with this is there is no isolation. Which means workload from one of the applications will affect the workload of others. So these are the two critical problems with this and a real time database like Rockset cannot possibly bear with this because they have to offer low latency for all the kind for all kind of ingestion and compute you would say but if that is the problem let me think of sharding because that is a natural progression that we go in so sharding is about splitting your entire data into smaller subsets and distributing across multiple nodes right? now you would say Ki, oh this seems to be solving a problem it does it solves some of the problem but what it still does not solve is the compute contention so here the problem that comes with this is that if there is if there are a bunch of applications who want the same data who want to query the same data all of the queries of all of the applications need to come to the same shard right so there is a compute contention on this node problem number one problem number two is this looks like a scalable solution but the scaling like requires a lot of data movement for example today we have four nodes tomorrow we add a fifth node then we would have to move data from each of the node to this one so there is a lot of data movement that does not make it purely elastic that is another problem obviously with having multi your data distributed across multiple shards you suffer from slowness of cross shard queries right? okay if this is problematic let's think of something else let's think of adding a bunch of read replicas which means each node will have the exact same entire copy of data, right? but there will be multiple such nodes. So now this gives you query isolation because now you can offer one read replica to each use case that you have. It gives you very beautiful isolation of workloads for, uh, for different applications, but it still suffers from the problem of ingest and query still contending for the same resource. Given that, the ingestion needs to happen now on all the nodes. So does query. The problem is it is still contending for the same resource on this node. That is a problem. Now that we are duplicating a lot of storage, the storage cost would shoot up. That is a problem. And scaling is also very slow. Scaling is slow because when I want to spin up a new replica, you would have to take the dump, load it, async replication and this and that because the amount of data that you are that your database needs to start with because all each of them contains the entire copy of data the scaling is slower what do we do we'll go to the next step the next step is if storage is the problem and i need compute isolation let me have a shared storage that's the next step so what do you do is you create a shared storage which all the compute nodes can talk to whenever they want to access the data 
So queries are handled by the compute nodes and whenever compute needs storage, they all make a network call onto the storage layer, read the data, just the just for the data, right? This is where this pattern is basically compute storage separation. This is how your entire data warehouses are built, where there are a bunch of nodes who are responsible for compute and there is a shared storage. Think of this shared storage as a distributed file system like a GFS, HDFS, S3, something like that. Right? Now this is a shared storage which offers file-like semantics. So any node who needs the data can just make a call, get the data and do whatever compute it needs to do on the data. So this is pure storage and these are compute nodes. Now this way you can see that your compute can easily horizontally scale given that there is no data on the compute nodes that for data they are reaching out to storage layer anyway. Now your compute can scale independently, problem solved. Second is now you can offer a bunch of compute nodes to a certain use case. So compute isolation is there, right? But what did you lose? You get some, you lose some. What did you lose? You lost that for every time I want to access the data, I have to make a network call. So you would think, okay, if that is slow, let me cache some of the data on the compute nodes. But as soon as you cache, you are making, like you are avoiding this network call, but you are losing on real time. Because now, given that you have multiple copies of data, one on the compute, one on the shared storage, if some changes happen on this, it would take some time for these changes to propagate. So you lose real time in that case. You see a bunch of trade-offs laid down as a buffet. <laughs> That's the beauty of this. So what do we do? This is where the rock sets approach of compute, compute separation comes in. They are very close to this approach because this approach is the closest when it comes to having isolation of compute, which is the key requirement for a real-time analytics database. You have a shared storage so that you don't need to duplicate the, the data, which means your system is truly horizontally scalable. The only problem with this approach was with that your data was not real-time. How do they solve it? Now, this is where rock sets compute, compute separation comes in. Before we jump into that, just one prerequisite for this is how rock set works. Rockset is built on top of RocksDB. RocksDB cloud to be specific, which is a cloud optimized version of RocksDB. The whole idea is because RocksDB is an LSM based database, your writes and updates or any kind of updates and deletes are buffered in memory in memtable and periodically flushed onto the disk in SST files. Right? This is what you need to know. That's it. Now let's go into their architecture. Now this is what their compute compute separation is and it's a beautiful concept. Hear me out. You have a node which is taking care of ingest right? and some of the compute. Now this ingestion would happen like all the uh, all the updates would come to this node. The updates would be buffered in memtable, flushed onto SST file, which then dumps to, which then goes to S3. It's a classic rock sets flow. If you have watched previous video, you would know what I'm talking about. If not, just for this video, you can watch the other videos later. But for this video, just understand the writes or the updates are buffered in memtable, flushed to SST file and then periodically pushed to S3. Okay. Now, the problem with storage compute separation was of delay. Right? So what Rockset does is that he say, they, hey, we need a bunch of compute nodes for horizontal scalability and isolation. We need that for sure. What we definitely need is we need the replication lag to be bare minimum or the time for the changes to propagate to compute node to be bare minimum or basically they were doing it on the storage side. Right? The lag should be bare minimum. The lag being minimum, so what they do is they set up asynchronous replication between the main node, the ingest node and the bunch of compute nodes that are there. So, but what do they, what do they replicate? They just replicate the mem table data. That's it. Just the mem table data. Not the SST files, simple mem table updates that are coming in, all the updates and the deletes what are coming in, they replicate it across the compute nodes. This way, there is almost zero lag of the updates that are like just now pushed onto the database or onto Rockset being available for query. This is almost zero delay. And your data is almost immediately available for query. That's the best part. Right? Now, obviously, they, these compute nodes, they still uh, they still rely on a hot storage. Now, hot storage, this is a shared hot storage, like how we spoke about it in storage compute separation. You have a shared storage. They also, Rockset also has a shared storage. Think, imagine this as a distributed file system filled with SSDs. Now, this shared storage, think of it as a cache for S3. 
so your actual SST files are on S3, but the files that are needed frequently are stored on this shared hot storage, right? Compute nodes, whenever they are, whenever a SQL query comes to the compute node, what they do is they want a bunch of SST files. If the files are there on shared storage, they, they query or they read the data from the shared storage directly. This is ultra fast. This bunch of SSD files, whatever data you want to read, you can read it directly from there. Right? And the real time updates that were happening, you don't have to wait for this propagation to happen. The changes are propagated right there and there. So this way, the recent updates are received through the asynchronous replication. Your shared hot storage acts as your S3 cache, which means you don't have to, in case the file does not exist, then you definitely need to go to S3, but that happens very rarely. It's highly infrequent. Right? So most of their requests are fulfilled from SSD or the real-time updates that reach the compute nodes. This is the beauty of their architecture. So this is how, this is how they leverage the storage compute separation and added an interesting fragment to it where they replicate the changes in the mem table to each of the compute nodes. And that's how the data, which is very recently written, is almost immediately available to query. This is super. And this is how you have to think of when you're building a real-time analytics database. And this is something that I found really fascinating when I was going through Rocksets internal. Because it ensured that my recently written writes and updates are almost immediately available for query. And this is how and this is what you typically need to think of when you're building a real-time analytics database because you're optimizing for something. So then you have to be okay giving up on something, right? The overall SLA that you are seeing is that Rockset offers a 99.9997% of cache hit ratio. So cache hit ratio, basically that the data that you are, that you are querying is almost always available in SSDs. You don't have to go to S3 and read it, which is pretty awesome. So one API call failing every six days, it's pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. Right? So they're still using S3 for durability. They have a hot storage, a distributed file system filled with SSDs as an S3 cache and compute nodes rely on that whenever they are reading the data. And this is how they do compute compute separation and they scale compute really well. They scale storage. Storage is basically, there's a distributed file system. They can scale it independently, right? S3 is where your entire data is anyway stored. This is a hot storage and your compute is scaling. You get isolation. You get everything that you need to offer ultra low ultra low latency in response time for any query that is coming while offering query isolation. And this is how they do compute compute separation. This was the fourth video in the Roxy database internal series. I hope you're loving the series. And yeah, this is all what I wanted to cover in this one. I hope you found it interesting. Hope you found it amusing. That's it for this one. I'll see you in the next one. Thanks a lot.